Okay, um, it's just a little bit after seven, but so we have plenty of time for both these artists to talk and show you their work. We're going to get started. Um, thank you so much for coming, especially on such a cold night. Um, I'm Hilary Chasse. I'm the manager of this space called Asia Art Archive in America. I think some of you have been here before, but to those who are new, welcome. Uh, we are the smaller satellite sibling of the Asia Art Archive organization, which is located in Hong Kong. Uh, and we collect and disseminate and make publicly accessible materials about contemporary art from Asia. Um, but here in New York, we have this small space uh, where we like to do programming with artists from and of Asia who we think are doing interesting work and put them in conversation and try to have a conversation with the whole audience. So um, tonight, we're very excited to have two artists um, here to present four, uh, five, five different works of uh, animation. Uh, and this is something that we've been interested in a long time. Throughout 2018, uh, it's 2018, yeah, five. Um, throughout 2018, we've been looking at the intersection of art and technology and how all of these artists are using new technology or older technology in new ways um, in their practice and as part of a broader practice. Um, so tonight, we're going to see Amber Mahid and Yun Huan Bei uh, present two different uh, sets of works. Uh, so how tonight's going to work, I'm just going to introduce them very briefly, and then Umber will be first, uh, and she'll introduce her videos, and then Bay will go after her with his two videos, and then we'll have time for discussion and questions at the end. So really, you know, think <coughs> of, there's a lot, it's very dense material, so think of questions and don't be shy, and, and we'll have, you know, 20 or so minutes at the end to chat. Um, so, uh, to introduce Umber first, Umber is a multidisciplinary visual artist based between New York and Lahore, Pakistan. Uh, her writing, performance, and animation work engage with familial archives to explore the specifics of the Pakistani state and urban infrastructure through a feminist lens. Um, and she uh, is most recently shown at, and currently still on view at the Queen's Museum International, uh, so please go check out her work there. She also was recently at Rubber Factory, solo show in uh, Lower East Side of Manhattan. Uh, she's shown in group shows at Apex Art before, and many other places throughout the world. Uh, and Yoon Hwan Bae uh, is a visual artist from Korea, South Korea. And he is the current Doosan uh, Gallery resident in New York for the fall season. Um, he's leaving New York uh, at the end of December. Um, and he has shown a solo show earlier this fall at the Doosan Gallery in New York. He's also had a solo show at the Doosan Gallery in Seoul. Um, and he's been parts of uh, group shows at the Seoul Museum of Art, the Seoul Olympic Museum of Art, and many other places all over Korea. Um, and uh, Bae will be presenting in Korean tonight, but uh, we have a wonderful translator, Hyo Jung Kim, who is the assistant curator at Doosan. So uh, she'll be here to help answer questions between the two of them. So without further ado, uh, Umber, if you want to come on up, I'll help you get set up over here. And uh, yeah, great. Thank you. Um, thank you for all coming out tonight. Um, it's very cold, but um, hopefully you will be entertained. Um, today, uh, I will be presenting um, three videos, which is part of a larger animation series. Um, one um, called uh, the Atami Demakewali Muhabbat, meaning um, the atomically explosive love. Um, and then an extension, extended chapter and version called In the Name of uh, Hypersurface of the Present. Um, so it's basically uh, a feminist rehistorization of the nuclear uh, history in Pakistan. And I've gathered materials from state archives and from my own family, um, photographic materials, tourism ephemera, um, objects, and kind of, um, kind of brought them all into the kind of digital interface. Um, and I use 3D animation as well as drawn animation. Um, the work and research is presented through um, other modes like lecture performance, um, animation, and um, multi-channel video installation. So this is the first time it's being screened one after the other. 
um, in a screening. And so you can see repeated motifs um, and repeated um, kind of lyrics. Um, so each, all of each chapter kind of contains different parts of the research process. Um, and I've been working on this research for about two years, um, gathering things from actually visiting Pakistan, looking into specific historical moments and um, kind of um, such as the creation and destruction of a uh, state monument called Chagi. So that is what um, the animation is consistently referring to. Um, the life of this monument, it existed for 15 years and, and there were multiple monuments and they were destroy, destroyed um, uh, by the state for various reasons uh, throughout the 15 years. So it had a very kind of short life. Um, so it kind of, the narrative kind of surrounds itself within looking through kind of the eyes of this monument to think about nuclear nationalism because the monument was used as a site to commemorate uh, the nuclear test. They, there was an actual holiday which was referred to in the last uh, animation called, um, the holiday is called Yom Beer, which is uh, the day of God's greatness. So in a way, science, poetry, um, and um, kind of the national state lens is used um, as a way to kind of speak of kind of how nationalism is kind of performed in these different ways. Um, and love and poetry is kind of subsumed as a technique to um, promote kind of state propaganda. So using kind of the lens of that or the kind of rhetoric around that, I kind of um, kind of overperformed it. So both using my voice, using the voice of this kind of fictional poet that is kind of re speaking of uh, recalling the events um, of kind of the, this nation's glory, which nuclear um, power is kind of spectacular, glorious. Um, the fictional character is, or the narrator in a way, which is performed by both myself and kind of this automated voice, um, is kind of calling out for what happens when um, the site of Chagi doesn't exist. Um, where can we perform our kind of national love? Um, and then it kind of goes from kind of this macro um, investigation at looking at the state to something so particular um, which was outlined in the second chapter uh, which was kind of the, the photograph um, of this kind of explosive flower which was actually given to which is actually owned by the man who headed the nuclear project in Pakistan so Abdul Qadir Khan and the man who was giving it to was my grandfather, who was um, an analog uh, amateur kind of photographer who had like nationalist leanings. So it's kind of the performativity of, or the most violent performativity of national love in the moment of kind of this, this monument. Um, is it in the moment of kind of my grandfather's photograph and kind of, um, or is it in the moment of the proclamation within kind of poetry? So the title of the first series, The Atomically Explosive Love, is derived from an actual poem that I got from an Urdu poet from kind of like popular literature, uh, mainstream Urdu poetry. And it was um, a book on a hundred definitions of love um, romance and lust um, and it was very patriarchal very interesting assumptions of what um, uh, love should be and he the author was a state academic as well so he had this kind of visibility and platform to kind of project um, um, 
speaking of the projector. Um, yeah, so that's what this series is kind of investigating, is kind of like taking apart all of this kind of different material um, and research and content um, around it. And I think animation has served as a way to kind of allow all of these things to come together, all this like source material, both stock imagery and then like very like um, delicate kind of archival material to come together and kind of play it out um, into this kind of speculative fiction. Um, so yeah, I think. Good. So thank you so much. Great. So we'll have to oh, okay. video first. So the first video is titled Self Portrait. 그리고 두 번째 어떤 게? 그 스튜디오 B로 가는 길. And the second one is Road to Studio B. 그래서 저는 이제 사회적이고 어떤 그런 사회 아, 그, 저는, 그, 스튜디오에서 일어나는 일들을 사회나 혹은 그냥 제 인생에 빗대서 많이 얘기하는 편입니다. Yeah, so I make an analogy between what's happening in my studio to the social issues and what's happening in the society and the world. 그래서, 처음에 어떤 셀프 포트레이트 같은 경우는 어떤 에피소드에서 시작돼서 제목이 만들어졌는데, So the first video, the, the self portrait began with an episode. 그, 박재사라는 제목을 원래 만들었다가 So the original title was Taxidermist. 그 보시면 느끼셨겠지만 글자를 읽을 수 있는 부분이 있고 그냥 막 스쳐 지나가듯이 막 지나가는 부분이 있는데 So there as you may see there are parts that you can read the text and there are some parts that is quite incomprehensible. 그게 편집 과정에서 어 편집자가 코스가 많이 부족해서 빨리 그 글자를 선택할 거냐 그러니까 글자를 읽게 할수 있는 대신에 그림이 부자연스러워지는 것과 그림이 자연스러워지는데 글자를 그 글자와 이미지 중에 뭘 선택할 거냐라는 질문을 하게 됐다 편집 과정 중에 Yeah, so that was half accidental and half intentional because of uh... Because of lack of budget and lack of teams, I need to make a decision between. Um, sorry. So um, I sort of short of some shots to make the videos look smooth. So the editor asked me if I want to choose to um, make the image look smoother or compromise the text. So I made a decision to compromise the text. 그렇게 해서 편집 과정 편집 과정까지 와, 돌아, 들어왔는데 저는 고민도 별로 안 하고 바로 이미지를 선택했습니다. So in the editing process I chose to compromise the text and I went for the image. 그때 바로 내가 작업이라는 것을 할때 작업을 대하는 태도가 매번 이런 식이었다는 것을 느꼈습니다. That's the moment that I realized that I always um takes that kind of attitude when making artwork. Uh, that, it might sound a little bit irresponsible as an artist, but I really wanted to be in eloquence and be clear, but I always fail to do so. 작업이 완성됐을 때 그림을 선택한 그 영상이 마치 제 그냥 거울을 비추고 있는 느낌이 들어서 셀프 포트레이트 제목이 만들어지게 되었습니다. So the whole video sort of looks like a, look, um, feels like looking at a mirror uh, to myself because it shows that I always make compromise and compromise text and choose for the image. 두 번째 보셨던 영상도 그 1년마다 작업실 이사를 하게 되면서 이, 이사를 하게 되면서 어, 느꼈던 복잡한 감정 그리고 그 시기에 좀 개인적으로 힘든 일들이 많았었는데 플랜 A를 계속 고집할 게 아니라 플랜 B가 가동된다면 
to yeah. So the second video is about the complex emotions that I had when uh, when I needed to move around studios every year. 그 비라는 게 실제 존재하는 것일까? 그곳이 있다면 어디인가? So I was thinking about my what my plan B was. 그게 미술 때려치는 일이 될지 아니면 미술을 하면서 다른 일을 하는 곳이 될지. What would it be? What would my plan be? Uh, so it was it like completely um, giving up making artwork, or would it be like making some art or other artworks than what I was doing? 그래서 그러면 그 그런 마음에 이동하는 과정을 영상으로 구현할 때 어떻게 구현할 수 있을까라는 생각을 하다가 만들게 된 게. So I visualized that my the change the process of my the <laughs> process of changing my mind, thinking all those issues. 그 지금 보여주시 보여드리고 있는 이미지들은 제 개인적인 나름대로 애니메이션을이 만들어지기 전에 어, 애니메이션과 관련이 있다고 생각하는 개인적으로 생각. Mm, so those images or the uh, my previous works that I before that I made before I was making I, I started to make animations. 그 대부분 대형 작업들이 한참 발현될 때 동시에 애니메이션을 만들고 싶다는 생각이 들었었어요. Uh, in uh, in line with my a larger scale works, I was simultaneously interested in making animations. 뭐 예를 들어서 이 작업 같은 경우 뭐 오십 오십 미터에 달하는 그림을 그린다거나. For example, this is a painting that is uh, 50 meters long. 이게, 이게 이제 부분 컷인데. And this is a detailed cut. 어, 이렇게 부, 큰 화면을 분할해서 그린다든가. So this is actually um, five individual images, but they are all in, on the same paper. 그러다가 이제 애니메이션을 만들게 됐고. And that's how I started to make animation. 아까 애니메이션을 보셔 이렇게 약간 애드리 애드리브 애드리브 즉흥성 이런 것들이 많은데. Ah, uh, so there's quite a lot of improvisational elements in my animation. 예를 들어서 2017년도에 갑자기 나무를 좋아서 계획이 없던 나무 작업들을 했던 이런 비슷한 이런 것들이 예시가 될수 있을 것 같아요. For example, um, I did this wood collage and wood work. When I found accidentally found some abandoned woods you know, around my studio, and this shows my improvisational qualities in my work. 그 여기 뉴욕에 와서 에드워드 게임이라는 전시를 하였습니다. And in New York at Tucson Gallery, New York, I did um, a solo exhibition titled "At the Old Ball Game." 이건 이제 메이저 리그에서 7회 말에 스트레칭을 부르는 노래의 가사의 일부분입니다. This is a uh, that. The title, the old ball game, came from a lyrics uh, song at the baseball stadium at the end of seventh inning. 어떤 작업실에서 그러니까 애돌돌 게임이라는 거는 저한테 오래된 법칙이라고 해석이 되어집니다. So I interpreted the the lyric or the old ball game as some kind of rules or orders. 그 가사 직전에 one two three 스트라이크면 아웃이야. 그 오래된 공룰이지라는 가사인데. So the lyric goes like one, two, three, and that's the strike. That's like the old ball game. 그러면 아웃이라고. Then out. Then you're out. <웃음> <웃음> 네, 아주 직접적이고 일차원적인 가사였지만. That's very direct and very one-dimensional. <웃음> 문득 세상은 그렇게 돌아가지 않나라는 생각이 But then I thought maybe the world works like that. <웃음> 그리고 작업실에서 지긋지긋하고 지루하다고 생각했던 그 법칙이나 어떤 나만의 루틴들이 소중하다고 느껴졌고. And the tedious and routines in my studio somehow felt really precious. 또 아까 제가 직구성으로 말씀드렸지만 이 전시 역시 제가 계획했던 것들과 많이 달라진 부분이 있었습니다. Oh, so as I mentioned, improvisational qualities. This exhibition also didn't go as I planned. 예를 들어, 저는 사실 살면서 홈리스에 관심이 전혀 없던 사람입니다. For example, I hadn't been interested in the homeless people any uh, in my life before. 제가 상상했던 뉴욕과 
그 뉴욕이 다 들었다면 뉴욕이라는 이미지가 처음에 좀 약간 충격적인 부분이 있었습니다. Um, when I first came to New York, so, so New York felt a little bit shocking for me. 곳곳에 홈리스들의 모습을 보았고. Because I see ho- homeless everywhere. 도시에 그 근래 갔던 메트로폴리탄의 동상들을 봤던 적이 있습니다. And I saw the sculptures at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. 웅크리고 있는 홈리스의 모습과 메트로폴리탄에 um, 있는 자세가 겹쳤던 적이 있었습니다. So um, the images of crouching homeless on the street and the images of sculptures that met somehow overlap in my mind. 순간 들었던 감정을 정확하게 표현 못하겠지만 그뭐 인간의 존엄성 뭐 인간이 더 그러니까 인간의 존엄성 그런 것이 미술관의 그런 동상들 앞에서 이렇게 무너져 무너져 어쨌든 좀 아이러니야 약간 mm. I I felt some kind of irony and what the dignity of human being is um, I my belief about those issues somehow uh, are getting really confused <웃음> <웃음> 그 이후에 뭐 어떤 그래서 이랬다 저랬다 할수 없을 정도로 요 근래 가장 최근에 들었던 감정이기 때문에 그, 그 이상 그래서 이랬다라고 뭐 설명을 더할 수는 없지만 뭐 요즘에 그런 것에 관심이 좀 있습니다. Mm, I still don't have the answer for that confusion, but I am interested in those issues these days. 이상입니다. Yeah, that's all. The reason I was really attracted to both of these works. was, I like them both on their own, I encountered them both separately, but I just thought, as in screening about animation, they're about as far apart using the tools of animation as we talk about it. You know, animation has been around for almost 100 years, starting with hand-drawn animation, stop-motion animation like Bay is using, and then now up in the last 15, maybe 20 years, going into computer animation or multi-channel animation, the type that Umber is using. So I guess my question to you both would be, why were you drawn to these different styles? And did those, in addition to the medium of animation, either open up new possibilities for what you wanted to explore, or did you find it limiting? So maybe we'll start with Umber Wolf translation. That's a very expansive question. Um, I don't think I had the chance to really talk about my previous work. Um, But what I can say is the techniques and methodology and aesthetics that I used in the animation were kind of an amalgamation of everything that I have been working towards over the maybe the last four years. So like literally the technique of drawn imagery kind of extracted from um, archival material and then kind of digital collages that somehow are animated. Um, Also kind of found imagery that I've been collecting, stock imagery, um, and then kind of finding ways in which writing can kind of enter the work. A lot of my earlier earlier work had to do There was a lot of one green screen, which is still prevalent, but um, uh, there was also a lot of um, writing around um, the work and performance, whether it was like using myself or um, kind of close friends, uh, relatives, um, and somehow, kind of, I expanded upon um, ways in which I can play with narrative structure. And I think animation, both like aesthetically and also um, kind of narratively is interesting uh, to explore. And it kind of allowed all my different interests or things that I've been working on to kind of come together, but even within that, mm-hmm. allow kind of this disjointed imagery, disjointed narrative to kind of 
have a place um, and to be experienced within its disjointedness. Um, I'm glad that you mentioned your broader practice because yeah. it really definitely ties in. Mm -hmm. Same question. Oh. Yeah. I'm interested in wood sculpture, wooden sculptures. 그거에 또 발전해서 파마. 파마? 우드컷. 아, 아, 파마는 우드컷. 그리고 웹툰. And webtoons, web cartoons. Yeah, that's all. Um, what I actually found interesting is while these were pretty stylistically distinctive works, I, it seems to me that what animated both works was actually some unpacking of personal experience of autobiography, and, and maybe that's sort of, um, um, for you and Bert, it seems to be sort of this, the uncanny ways or the unexpected ways in which um, personal narrative intersects with the national, and I'm thinking specifically of the mode, that image of your, of, uh, your grandfather, is that right? Um, and... Um, I'm sorry, I've forgotten your name. Bay. Bay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, that's really embarrassing. I really enjoy your work. <laughs> seem like it. Um, it seemed to me that like it's the personal, the emotional and personal experiences of creating work and um, or of sort of working through a creative practice. And so I just wanted to sort of, um, I guess, on the one hand, sort of hear from you guys how much sort of autobiography or sort of animates your work in general or if I'm because I have a hammer I'm seeing a nail everywhere so um whoever wants to start I think it was um outlined by Hillary in my biography like it kind of starts from this moment of like using both materials that are close to me uh, archival materials to speak about kind of larger infrastructural historical issues of homeland, nation state. Um, and I think I think it's important for me not only to look at it as like because in the animation I didn't really mention that this man mm -hmm. is my grandfather. I kind of mentioned it afterwards and I don't and sometimes I mention it, sometimes I don't. But um, it really comes from a place of like yes, it is it is um, my family history, but it's kind of my family history is used as like a jumping off point to talk about um, larger issues um, and kind of looking at ways in which kind of family is also a reproduction of kind of capitalist kind of infrastructure and it's played out on like a micro scale, but it kind of reproduces kind of um, certain subtle violences, you know. Um, and I can speak through kind of being a South Asian American and kind of like diaspora and like, and seeing ways in which kind of nationalism tradition kind of play out in different ways. So kind of Family is used as like a generational, like historical tool to map out like ways in which there's like a trickle down effect of nation states. So family is just like one marker, right? Um, but then um, I'm also very much interested in like implicating a very specific politics, right? So it's um, kind of the f female voice or narrative has no kind of place in kind of military history, right, of this country. So it's more about kind of carving that out, out of whatever narrative is already available and kind of put out there and kind of like inversing it. Um, so family is very important and it's part of the research, but it's also like all these other things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
개인적인 Can you clarify your question? Yes. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Oh, just um, wh whether or not um, sort of autobiography sort of animates your work and how much how important it is to you. Oh, oh, cool. Oh, cool. It says 100%. 100%. <laughs> 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 yeah. Great. <laughs> 제가 작업실 가는 길에 본 사람을 보고 그게 작업에 들어오기도 하고 그냥 평소에 관심 없던 문제나 아니면 이미 대한민국에서 너무 큰 문제가 돼버렸는데 그게 그걸 직접적으로 표현하는 거전 개인적으로 별로 좋아하는 스타일이 아니고 그거를 저 개인적인 문제 중에 비슷한 게 뭐가 있을까라고 그렇게 접합지점을 찾다가 그걸 의인적으로 비유하는 그런 스타일 주로 하는 스타일이라고 I don't prefer to make Um, explicit and direct statement in my work, but instead I want to say it indirectly by focusing on or inviting the personal surroundings in my work. <웃음> 아 그리고 요즘에 좀 되게 멋있는 말을 하나 알, 알게 되고 그거를 굉장히 동의하고 있는 게. And I recently found a really cool <웃음> sentence, which is. <웃음> 여기 계신 작가님이 얘기했던 건데 so, he, what he said. 자기가 그려지는 것을 어, 자기가 뭘 그려야 될지 사냥감을 찾는 게 아니라 자기가 그려지는 것이 자신의 작업이란 그려지는 거 그리는 거 그리는 게 그려지는 거 나, 아. 내가 그리, 그릴 수 있는 게 아니라 그려지는 거 아. 그걸 영어로 뭐라고 해야 될지 okay. you, don't, you don't look for what you are gonna hunt But what is drawn by you is what you. What, 그려지는 것이 뭐라고요? 그러니까 자연스러운 거. 나, 내, 내가 어떻게 그려지는 것이 곧 뭐라고요? 그게, 그게 진짜 작업이죠. What is drawn 그러니까 by you is the real world. 찾고 하는 게 아니라 you don't try 거. to find the topic or something, but let what's drawn by you lead you. 그만 그만이었죠. 아, 예. <웃음> <웃음> 내가 그리는 게 아니고 응, 그려지, 나한테 내가, 그려지는 거. 내가 그려지는 거. 나를 나를 관찰하게 되는 거예요. 응. 그냥 자기가 white or question? 질문 하나 더. 질문 하나. Jane, I know you have a question. Oh, I have lots of questions. <웃음> 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 they can be here all night. Um, I'm very interesting to have the comparison between or the the two the two different um, approaches um, through animation um, and what struck me about both of them and this is more of a comment than a question but is the complexity the layered aspect of um, both of your work and the kinds of multiple media that you all work multiple visual um, textures that you um, both bring to your work in very uh, very different ways, but at the same time I kept feeling that I wanted both of you to stop, like stop, I want to I want to think through what you have just shown me. I feel as if I wanted to unpeel and unpack, there's so much there. It, they feel like very um, dense work, many, many stories involved in both of them, and I felt that that was very interesting because I think each one of them has multiple stories that you could then further draw upon. Um, to create more work, and I thought that was very, uh, very, very interesting in what you do, but somewhat, it, from a viewer's perspective, somewhat frustrating, because I kept thinking, I don't really understand, which is fine, because I've read a lot of work I don't understand, but I want so much to know more about each one of those. So Umber, for, for in, just in, for example, a very simple thing, um, Chagi, the, is it a place? Is it a monument? Is it a moment? Is it a memory? Is it, you know, all these kinds of things. You know, I was struggling with even kind of placing what it was, which is okay. But at the same time, they, I'd love to know more about it. The other thing is, before I knew that that man was your grandfather, um, that picture of that, that scene where there's this framed flower Um, or that scene where there's an art exhibit and he's showing you have all these very portly men <laughs> standing around looking very serious in front of flowers, of all things, um, was such an evocative moment. And then, you know, handing it to another very obviously important man, you know, an important man handing something to another important man. And it being a flower, to me, was 
also something very provocative and very interesting and made me want to know more. And I just hope you do more with that. Whether or not it's your grandfather, it, you know, actually that's interesting. And you, you, there's nothing wrong with dealing with one's family. I think it's something great because we all at some level mirror or respond to our, our, our um, or our players in a, in a much larger narrative, um, whether it's a national narrative or... So, I mean, I just think there's such richness there that what I'm saying to you is there's so many interesting moments that I think um, there's just a lot of material that I'd love you to continue to develop. Um, so... Can I just respond sure, to that? Absolutely. Yeah, if possible? Um, as I think I, mes I mentioned right after the screening that um, I've worked on this for like about two years and I've shown different iterations at mm -hmm. different times and um, within the screening there's a whole other chapter on kind of the life of the monument um, and kind of rumors about the monument and how and all these things and I did not include it because mm -hmm. That very moment, uh, the very thing that you asked me, like, what is Chalky? Mm -hmm. Is that thing mm -hmm. of like not knowing and not placing, not being able to place mm -hmm. what it is mm -hmm. and how it can be disseminated um, through time and material and um, kind of all these things can be attached to this, this mm -hmm. kind of idea of a place, of a time, of a blast, mm -hmm. of a. So, I mean, that's other another thing is that this kind of project can kind of unfold in different ways and can be performed in different ways. I've done live readings uh, with different excerpts of the animation, and it's it is a challenge actually to be able to present this material. Um, and I have to constantly think if this is a screening, like what parts can I show? If it's a multi-channel installation. How big is the projection? How, um, what screens am I using? How many screens am I using? Sound elements, space. So it's all things that I consider because I do understand it's dense material. Um, but I think uh, I've worked out a kind of formula I, for the last chapter in which a lot of things are invoked just through, I let the animation kind of speak for itself through kind of certain aesthetics and um, less kind of of a reading and more of like written text um, and allowing the viewer to read and kind of engage on another level um, rather than me reading to uh, as in the first two chapters. Um, so these are all things I consider and I think the animation kind of method is, is kind of like helpful in an in, in extension of playfulness. Um, in all these ways. Um, <laughs> and maybe, um, Bay, in terms of your work, um, again, there feels to me that there are many, many stories involved, particularly when I saw the taxidermist work. And I'm thinking, if you call that the self-portrait and how a taxidermist is constantly trying to fit stories into animals into which those stories would explode or, or, or overflow or overtake. Um, I thought that was a wonderful um, way of thinking in a sense about an artist, you know, having this sort of responsibility to create an image that actually into which you you fit lots of stories but those stories keep changing that image or or mutating that image or or erasing that image even so i don't know how you, whether that taxidermist is there a taxidermist in your family uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> How did you come up with that idea of a taxidermist? Ah, the dog, 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 
그 항공하기 약사하고 막 그런 거 약간 여우 같다고 얘기하잖아요. 음. 그럴 때저 사람이 내뱉는 말들은 좀뱀 같고 여우 같고 그러다가 음. 그 텍스트가 어떤 형상처럼 느껴지고 그형 그 것을 자연스럽게 동물의 이제 언어가 들어간다고 이제 상상을 한번 해본 거죠. 어. 그 성향에 맞는 사람 언어를 떠올리다. <웃음> <laughs> so um, there, people have certain way of saying things, and I so imagine like, th okay, this person is like tiger, or this person is like fox, and then, uh, <laughs> then I came up with the idea of taxidermist, like the visualizing or making sense of how what a person's character is, as a form of like animal, and then, yeah. That's how it came. 그러면 이제 소문이나 그런 것들을 절대로 영원히 멈출 수 없다는 생각을 하다가 이제 그 동물이 멈춰 있는 상상을 하다가 그 이제 박제 박제된 동물을 떠올리게 된 그런 생각. Oh. And then I thought uh, rumors can never be stopped. And then I imagine uh, the animals that is, I mean the living and the moment when living animal stops, and that's when the animal is taxidermized. And that's how I came up with the idea of taxidermist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe on that note, yeah. we'll uh, thank mm -hmm. Umber and Faye again. Mm -hmm. so, um,